Hi, my name is Jonathan Fox and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this series of videos, we're going through Slack app development. And if you remember from the previous video, we were exploring getting started in Slack. Well, today we're going to be expanding on what we did and we're going to be adding some functionality to our app's homepage. So let's head over to Slack and see what I mean. Here is our Slack homepage. Now, if you remember, um, we built the functionality that whenever we entered the home page of the app, we would get a message. And you can see that I've got a message here. Um, you can also see that I've been playing around and testing a lot. Um, so I've got lots of messages, but we want something a little bit nicer than a blank home screen. And yours might just even have a loading icon or maybe even an error message because nothing shows. Um, so we want to add something to this home screen because we want to make it look pretty. We want our app to look good and eventually build some functionality within that home screen too. So how do we go about doing that? Well, first of all, what I want you to do is go ahead and open your um, developer IDE. Uh, I'm using VS Studio from the previous video. And you can see this is our um, app that were the, the code that we built from last time. I've used ng rock again to start my apps um, uh, URL. Um, opening my local host environment um, externally and I've started my app using nodemon index.js remember those were the two commands we used previously so what we want to go ahead and do is do exactly that use nodemon and ng rock but notice that if you're using the free version of ng rock or you close down your session from the previous video you will now get a different URL here so it's just to be aware that because you get a different URL, what you now need to do is head over to slack.api, uh, api.slack.com, sorry, and go to event subscriptions because this URL will no longer be the correct one. And what you want to go ahead and do is click change and enter your new ng rock URL there, remembering to add Slack events. And then you will get a new verified URL. That's just because ng rock, if, unless you're on the paid version, changes the URL each time. Um, if you don't get the verified uh, tick next to your new URL, make sure you've added Slack events on the end. Also make sure your app is running um, in your um, IDE. So not just launched ng rock HTTP 3000 from last time, but also started the app as well. As long as you're sure that you've done both of these things, you should get a verified URL. Now, to publish a view within Slack, we need to build the payload. Effectively, what we're doing is we're posting a JSON payload back to Slack to show it, to tell it what to show to the user. Now, there are two ways we can do that. We can build it ourselves and write it line by line ourselves, which is absolutely fine. Um, but because we're using Bolt and we want to use uh, Slack block kit builder because it allows us to use the drag and drop what you see is what you get editor here um, to create a nice um, page view. Um, I will go through Slack block kit builder in a different video and if I've published a video already you'll see a link somewhere in this video now uh, taking you to that video um, but effectively you have a bunch of different um, elements and functions here within block kit kit builder that you can drag and drop onto the uh, you, well, I think you click them there we go onto the page when you do that you get a generator payload here and this is what we want to use so go ahead pause the video now and um, design your app homepage um, to the exact specifications you want the right text um, buttons um, any images you might want to add in today's video we're not going to be using um, actions so buttons won't actually do anything today that'll come next video um, so what you want to do is go ahead and copy the pay payload once you've done that and head back over to Visual Studio Code now I've already got my payload created and my next chunk of code so I'm just going to paste that in now and I'm going to go over what I've done now you'll see here from um, the point of blocks that is what we saw in the payloads pane on block kit builder that's what I created using that declarative interface but what you will notice is there are a couple of extra lines I've done after the say function now I'm leaving the say function because that's what posts our message to say hello to the user but what I'm also doing is I'm adding a try catch block because I'm going to try and post my payload back to slack to show to tell you what to show 
In order to do that, I need to use the client, client objects view method, and I'm going to publish that view. Where do I get this from? Well, I need to add client into our arguments here within the function. And I can store the result if I want to um, and do something off the back of the result should I need to. Um, I'm not in this example. So I'm going to use client.views.publish, which allows me to publish a view, a, a, you know, a UI back to Slack. I've captured here the user ID because I need to know which user I'm publishing it to. And I'm also defining here what type of view I'm publishing. So it's a type of home and the callback ID is home view because that's what I'm publishing. And then as the next uh, parameter here, I've got my payload of what I'm going to send. Catching any errors, if there are any, and I'm going to log into the console for now. Obviously you do a lot nicer error handling um, in your own production worthy app. Um, but that effectively is all we need to do to publish a view back into Slack. We use client.views.publish. We define the user. Um, we tell Slack what type of view we're wanting to use. And then we paste in the payload from a tool such as Slack Block Kit Builder, which you know formulates and builds out this payload for us. If I go ahead and click save, my app reloads. Now, should I go back into Slack, hopefully what I see, if I can reload the app, I would see the payload exactly as I saw in Blockit Builder now renders whenever I enter the home screen. So if I go away and come back, refresh the, uh, the app, the Slack app, um, I can see my payload is there. Just to confirm, you can see this payload matches exactly to what you see here. Now that's all I have for today's video. Um, showing you how to publish a view back into Slack. Um, but I hope that video was really useful. Um, and what we're going to do next time is look at how we can use that click me button to fire a new event. So not just a um, one way, you know, very linear stream. We're going to look at how we can now do actions and things off the back of that home page uh, of the app. Thank you all for watching. And until next time, goodbye.